He was an avid football player, having trained with the U-19 national football team and was on the verge of being recruited by the Veritas football club. But on Tuesday evening, while in the company of his 17-year-old cousin at the Norman Broster Stadium in San Ignacio, Chris Rodriguez was stabbed multiple times by Fausta Tech, a caretaker of the stadium. Manuel Rodriguez says he was at work when he got the dreadful call about his son. I was training hard at the time um, when I got a call that you know Chris got stabbed. I was shocked, surprised for they're calling me for something like that because I know Chris is not a troublemaker. Chris to avoid trouble. If you tell Chris something, he would walk away. And for him to get stabbed, something had to really um, went wrong. We found out it was uh, stabbed to the to the neck, I guess, um, and um, also um, to the a little bit under the rib cage, like to the rib, and he punctured his um, his um, lung, you know, and that would that cause him um, a shot of breath, you know, and um, and then they put when I in, while he was in Saint Asia, they actually put a tube inside of him to try to. I believe take out uh, that breed better and take out a lot of uh, bruised blood or whatever he had in there, you know. So they said uh, if he might need a surgery, uh, so they transport him to, to Belmopan Hospital. Chris died at the Western Regional Hospital in Belmopan shortly after 1 a.m. today. Amateur footage was captured of Chris running onto the pitch with tech in pursuit even after being stabbed. The incident happened in the presence of many who witnessed the deadly encounter. They have been left traumatized. Carlos Rodriguez's son, Keon, was also with Chris at the time. He was too shaken up to speak, but his father recounted what led to the fatal stabbing. This guy approached them and telling them that if they have any ticket to be on the grounds to play, they, they said no. So the guy tell them, you guys need to leave. So, so Chris asked, why, we, why, do, why do we have to pay for, for, for practicing? Right? So, so my son said, well, right now we are leaving. We're just going to take off our jerseys and we are, we're going to leave. So when they were walking out, the guy was, was standing at the entrance at the gate. And that's what the, he was telling Chris that he's, he's the one that owned that field. And if he wants, he can make them come back. But if he wants, he cannot make them never to come in in that, in that stadium. How is your son doing? In terms of because he's very, he basically he, witnessed he's very traumatized. He don't want to come out from his, from his house and he's crying. I'm trying to talk to him. He don't want to hear nothing. So he, he blamed himself that he, he maybe could have tried to do something. But I said that maybe if he tried to intervene, maybe he will be, be the guy to get stabbed. I mean, you already um, stabbed this guy twice and then Chris running for his life, you know. I would, you know, if someone chasing me with a machete or a knife, I would run for my life. And then you chasing me behind, that means you really want to finish me. You, you, really don't, you really don't have any remorse on me. You really want to remove me from this world. The murder of the teenager is yet another tragedy for the family. Back in April of 2016, his mother and aunt were killed in a vicious double murder in Santa Elena. Miriam Mai and Daisy Miralda, who is Chris's mother, were shot dead by Mai's ex-common-law husband, Andy Bustios, inside Betty's salon. Manuel Rodriguez says that the family has still not healed from that double murder and now has to deal with another loss. Not only his mother, his aunt as well, both of them, it was rough for, for me as well, you know, um, living with your common law and then they just take, it, take your common law away from you and then the kids are much smaller and then you have to raise as a single father. You're, he the family is calling for justice. By all accounts, the deceased had a future in football in Belize. I never want to believe that him, you know, like, I mean, just touched me, you know, like this innocently young boy, you know, where we just feel a talent and I'm like, man, why? Why him, you know? Like, I'm just, just hurted. He wasn't out at a bar, you know, he was at the, at the stadium, you know, where he came every day to do the stuff that he loved, you know, like, I know, understand, like, you're not safe anymore. That, that was his dream, you know. He didn't follow my footstep as a, as a jockey or a house trainer. He, 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 he had his own goal, his own dream, and I, I, I totally supported Chris, you know. Um, he saw that he um, had to pass away in that manner. I always told him from the beginning, I'm proud of you, son. You basically did it on your own because I always been out working, and he basically did it on his own, and I applaud Chris for that. And he had a dream to become a great football player. And he was chasing his dream, but he was cut short. Dwayne Moody for News 5.